Hey, what's going on guys? Ben Brewster here at TreadAthletics.com. I'm joined here today by Dr. Nevin Markle. Thanks for joining us. Sure. Um, so Nevin is a chiropractor by trade. He has worked with hundreds of professional athletes from NFL, MLB, uh, NHL, PGA, NBA. Uh, he's worked with them all, but specifically as it relates to tread athletics, uh, I've seen him personally for my own career for the past few years, um, and it's been a complete game changer in terms of my knowledge of the human body, of anatomy, and of my own performance. Um, he's also consulted with dozens, if not hundreds, of our own athletes. Uh, when they have issues, we, we send them to him for a consult, for you know, information and insight that they can't get anywhere else about their body. Um, he's really a specialist when it comes to soft tissue uh, and rehabilitation as it relates to performance. So uh, without further ado, I want to introduce uh, Dr. Markle and kind of get into, in this video, the role of fascia as it relates to performance, as it relates to throwers. Uh, it's kind of a, a little talked about subject, and when it is talked about, uh, there's often, you know, not necessarily the context from an anatomical standpoint that uh, that we could get from somebody like uh, Dr. Markle. So, Nevin, I want to pose this question to you for this specific video. Maybe we can just touch on it, um, you know, touch on the, the key points. But what in your mind is kind of the role of fascia for throwers, for performance, for velocity? Um, you know, tell us a little bit about, about fascia, what it is, and, and how we might be able to address it in our training. Fascia has become a big buzzword in the uh, therapy world and I think the athletics world started to embrace it as well. Um, some of the athletes that I work with may not even know what the word fascia is, but uh, unbeknownst to them, they use fascia their whole lives to become elite athletes. Uh, fascia is basically the layering around our tissues. Uh, it's continuous over our whole body. It's like the inner skin, if you will, and it's muscles, organs, tendons, ligaments, etc. Um, but fascia, what's interesting about it, as we've learned more in modern research, it's not a dead tissue that we used to think that it's just packing tissue, you know. It actually is the uh, source of a lot of the power that athletes harness when they run, sprint, jump, or throw. And in your case, with throwing athletes, uh, the best in the world, you can see that they uh, have one thing in common, they're very elastic. They may seem like they're sather type, but they're elastic when they throw. That's like a, it's like a catapult mechanism to throw a ball very hard. And fascia is, is how they do it. Of course, they use their muscles, but the fascia is the transmission mechanism. It's the tissue that allows you to, you know, load up like a spring and uncoil when you go to vertical jump or dunk or throw a ball hard. But what's interesting about fascia, at least from my perspective, is uh, when we see it now with modern technology, it's not, again, just dead, you know, plastic tissue. It's actually where almost all of the water in our body lives. It's a fluid dynamic structure. So um, the fascia basically allows us to remain fluid and, and pliable and it helps us uh, create, uh, you know, like a large uh, elastic spring mechanism, like I said. And the other thing that's really interesting about fascia is that it houses and uh, all of the receptors in our body. Receptors are like the, uh, basically the, the conduits to the nervous system. Tell us where we are in space. People probably heard of the term proprioception, and that, that is the uh, skill that a lot of athletes have inherently, where they know where they are in space. They have that natural instinct to get their arm in the right slot or be right on time to get the ball out to throw very hard and the fascial tissue is uh, what allows them to do that. So that's what I have turned my interest to as far as understanding and working with that tissue, whether it be with treatment and training. And uh, I think fascia is uh, the future for uh, athletic performance. Just a follow-up question to that. Um, you know, there's kind of some uh, fad type workouts out there where it's called like fascial training. D do you feel like you can really isolate the fascia in training or is, you know, from the fundamental like workout standpoint, is it is it gonna be kind of the same types of plyometrics, heavy lifting, you know, combination of strength and power movements. Like, can, can you really isolate fascia per se in training or is it something where, you know, maybe in a, from a therapy perspective, you can isolate it? How does it, our understanding of fascia change how we should either rehab or train? It's a great question. After just saying all that, no, you can't really isolate just fascia. It doesn't work like that. What's cool about the fascia concept, you know, it gets us out of the compartmentalized vision of the body where everything is just bone and muscle chart like we see in a biology class, the fascia basically ensures that all the tissues are continuous. So skin, fat, muscle, tendon, ligament, bone, it's all connected. So um, fascia just more is just the mechanism to connect all that and uh, it's what links everything together. So muscle and tendon to bone to you know allow us to create that slingshot mechanism from the back of the throw forward, it's the fascia allows that connection. Uh, I think you can isolate the fascia to a degree even if you're not trying to because uh, basically you can't separate it. it. You can't target just a muscle is another way to look at it or just a tendon without accounting for the fascia. So like I said earlier, the fascia, you know, it, it allows us to uh, make that spring-like mechanism. Things like plyometrics or throwing a ball or a javelin, um, you're, you're harnessing the power of the fascia and training it no matter what. It's always involved. It tells you where you are in space and it allows you to create speed and power in all the exercises you would create. And just one, one, final, uh, one final question on that too. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about 
you know, the role of an injury or maybe a surgery in terms of uh, negatively affecting the fascia and how a lot of therapists or, or surgeons even, you know, maybe don't mention the fact that, you know, the fascia isn't just this dead tissue, right. that the, the fascia plays such a key role in producing, you know, performance and producing this elastic effect that once you've cut through it, once you've had a major uh, injury to a tissue, um, you know, it can actually alter the way the fascia behaves. So yeah. talk a little bit about that in terms of its uh, its role in the kind of the rehabilitation process. Yeah, it, it, that's the, the, the thing that's it's hard to visualize unless you've seen it live and in person, whether it be uh, maybe on a surgical table or uh, in a cadaver, a fresh cadaver, but um, the fascia is everywhere. It's, it's, you can't really avoid it. You know, when you want to see a bicep, when you go through the skin, you go through all this white, you know, fluid-like, jelly-like tissue, and that's the fascial tissue. Um, unfortunately, because you have to sometimes cut through that to get to things like, uh, you know, an ulnar collateral ligament for Tommy John surgery, you, fascia inevitably gets cut and it gets damaged. Um, it's got a tremendous recuperative capability if the therapist or the person has the intention to try and make that better. But uh, yeah, over history, unfortunately, it's been ignored. And um, we know that, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, knee replacements or ACL repairs or UCL repairs, that um, that's a big overlooked component that, you know, you don't uh, retrain the tissue to uh, participate in the proprioception of where that arm and joint is in space. And that also helps the brain understand how to fire muscles in sequence and everything else. So I think a good way to think about it is the fascia uh, is like an information you know, complex. It tells us where we are in space. And when you have a surgery, I think that's an overlooked and, and a very valuable component of the rehab process is building proprioception and building back tissue quality because there's scar and things like that. That'll distort the uh, brain's image of the body. Guys, if you found this video helpful or interesting, uh, Nevin has a ton of information out there online. Go follow him on Instagram at Anatomy Links. Uh, also, if you're struggling with an injury yourself, um, Nevin actually has a therapy clinic in Charlotte, North Carolina. You can reach out via his website, which we'll link in the video description below. Thanks for watching.